Hello, and thanks for tuning in. My name is Guy, and I will talk about a lower bound for the game theoretically fair leader election problem. This is a joint work with Sarati Gelashvili and Sasha Spiegelman, who were previously at Novi and now at Arcos. Let's start. Leader election is a fundamental task in distributed computing. Roughly, it means that all players should agree on a single leader, which can also be thought of as a tossing an end-faced shared coin. We consider the problem in a setting of synchronous round with a common broadcast channel and an adversary that might control any number of players. Essentially, this means up to n minus one corrupted players, since if all players are fully corrupted, then the outcome has no effect on any players. So we must have at least one honest player to measure the outcome by. We assume the existence of a perfect commitment scheme which means that a player can send a commitment to a certain value, and only when it decides to open this commitment, the value is revealed. Uh, a simple example for that would be sending the hash of the value as the commitment, and for opening the commitment, sending the value itself. Now, I've said that we consider n minus one, possibly 40 players, and this might sound somewhat weird as we know that an honest majority is necessary for consensus. And in fact, when we look at the classic definition for the end-faced coin, it is impossible. Roughly speaking, we can divide a classic definition into two properties. Correctness, which means that if all players behave honestly, the protocol's outcome is that of a random shared coin with n faces. And fairness, which states that the output distribution at the honest players, of course, is not affected by the adversary. Now, this was proven impossible by Cleve almost 40 years ago. On the other hand, if we change the fairness property into a game theoretic one, that is, if we assume that every force wishes to be the leader, then solutions exist. Specifically, the tournament tree protocol, which is a folklore extension of Blunt's work on uh, two-faced coins. This uh, tournament tree protocol solves the problem in an order of log n rounds. Let me elaborate about the log n upper bound, starting with Plum's two players protocol. Assume we have two players, Sasha and Rati. Each of them locally flips a coin, where heads equals to one and tails to zero. Let's say Rati got one and Sasha got tails. Now they broadcast their commitments uh, to those values, for example, on a blockchain. And in the next round, they reveal their commitments and the winner is the XOR of the values. In our case, Sasha is the winner. Good for you, Sasha. Now, suppose Rati is malicious. He can decide not to open his commitment. In that case, the protocol determines that Rati forfeits and Sasha is the winner by default. Very simple and very elegant. Clearly, the adversary can influence the outcome by not revealing its commitment properly. So it is not a perfect coin, but the adversary's influence only damages itself. So we get game theoretic fairness, which is very suitable for leader election. We can extend Blum's coin toss to an end-faced dice by constructing the tournament tree. For example, we now have four players. In the first round, Rati eliminates Sasha and P2 eliminates P3. Then Rati and P2 compete in the final. Luckily for Rati, he wins and becomes the leader. Great, Rati, yay. In general, for N players, we need log N tournament levels. Each level requires two rounds. The first to broadcast the commitments and the second to reveal them. The tournament tree protocol establishes the upper bound of an order of log n rounds for game theoretically fair leader election, which we also call coalition resistant leader election. Naturally, we wish to know if we can do better or is log n the best possible round complexity. In other words, what can we say about the lower bound to the problem? A recent paper by Chang Chang Wen and Chi 
showed a clever lower bound argument that n rounds are also required for game theoretically to a leader election. But only if committed values must be open immediately after they are broadcast. This is a foundational result, and in general, proving tight logarithmic lower bounds for similar tournament based protocol leader elections is not a trivial task. Well, in their paper, they mostly discuss a protocol for a weaker variant of the problem. But when discussing their lower bound result, they emphasize the dependency of their lower bound on immediately opening the commitments and the need to overcome this restriction. We take a step in that direction by showing a lower bound argument that does not require immediately opening the commitments. However, our proof does require other somewhat technical assumptions that you can find in the paper. Let's illustrate the key difference between the lower bounds. Consider again the log n round tournament tree protocol for before. The immediately opening commitments can be viewed as generating the random as the local coin flips for each level as we go along. That is, at the first level, each player generates a random bit, and only after the level is over and the next qualifiers are known to all, only then the second random bit is generated and committed. This means that the adversary can manipulate messages adaptively and chooses its uh, apparent random bit based on the transcript so far and how it evolved. We can therefore view the lower bound as relying, fully relying on the power of the adversary to be adaptive. On the other hand, consider the same protocol as before, only that now the players committed to the entire random string already at the first round. The bits are revealed round by round. Now, at the second round, there are no bits to create, just to reveal. So the adversary's power is strictly limited in comparison to before. It must decide on its attacking string in advance and cannot adapt it as the uh, protocol goes along and the transcript evolves. We call this adversary static as opposed to adaptive in the previous case. Unfortunately, the lower bound proof of Chang, Chan, Wen, and Qi does not cover this very natural example. In general, the more limited the adversary, the stronger the lower bound is, since it captures more scenarios. A lower bound for a static adversary immediately holds for an adaptive adversary, but uh, not vice versa. Indeed, the, our lower bound proof captures both of the previous examples. However, our lower bound is restricted by two assumptions. I will not go into their details since they are technical and you can find the details in the paper. I will say that although the first assumption is strictly more general than what is implied by the immediately open commitments condition, the second assumption is incomparable. And therefore, we cannot claim that it is implied by the immediately open commitments condition. To conclude, the elegant proof of Chang, Chan, Wen, and Chi, the one that showed a lower bound of log n rounds for coalition resistant leader election, left open a question of relaxing the restriction on the protocols so that they will not have to immediately open all cryptographic commitments. We take a step in this direction by removing this restriction. Specifically, our lower bound captures the standard tournament tree protocol, even if all message commitments are made in the beginning, what we call the static adversarial behavior. However, we do require a new assumption for our proof. So the open problem of the unconditional round complexity remains. But uh, perhaps we can view this assumption in a different light. For example, by attempting to circumvent this somewhat technical assumption with a more clever algorithm that would reduce the round complexity, or perhaps a stronger and unconditional lower bound will be proved. That's all. I encourage you to read the paper. It is very short and concise. Thank you for listening. And uh, well, that was it.